welcome to um, my presentation. So everything today is going to be about online retail. Quick show of hands, who's already got an online retail store? So there's a few experts already in the crowd, right? Who's got a physical store, but they're not selling online? Quick show of hands. And then who's complete newcomer and they're thinking about starting online? Good stuff. So guys, I'm Paul, obviously, and over the next half an hour, I'm going to try and teach you everything that I know about online retail, so starting an online retail business. Um, and to start with, I just want to highlight a few of the advantages of online retail. Now, you guys probably know a lot of these already. Firstly, it's very low cost. You can start an online retail store today on a very low budget. In comparison to starting a store where you have to obviously pay for rents, you have to pay for fittings, furniture, it's very, very low cost, which then also makes it very low risk. You can start an online retail to store today, and you can put little risk into it, and if it doesn't pay off, you won't lose a lot of money in the process. 24-7 sales. I'm going to explain my story in just a minute, but when I had a sale from Kazakhstan at 3 o'clock in the morning, when I was asleep, I knew that online retail was what I wanted to do more of. So you can make 24-7 sales worldwide, you have a much wider audience. It's mobile. Mobile is more trusted now. I've seen a lot of mobile phones in the audience already. You can buy on your mobile. Who's bought something from Amazon on their mobile? How quick are Amazon when you buy something? They take your money without even entering your credit card information anymore. So online retail is mobile, and that's going to be more accessible for you guys as well. It's more trusted. It's growing. Every single year, online retail is growing, and it's very, very easy to start. So my quick story, um, I started an online fashion business seven years ago. So I started when I was 19 years old, and I was very naive, I made a lot of mistakes, but at the same time I had a few successes as well. And this sounds a bit cheesy, but an online fashion business did really change my career, and it changed my life. It gave me freedom, it allows me to work wherever I want, and I can still generate an income doing so. I run an online business full time from home. If I decide to travel, I can still run my business. If I'm in a coffee shop today, I can still run my business. Okay, so online retail and working online as a fashion business has helped me massively. A few little shots says me featured on Vogue, um, GQ. These were around LCM, which happened a few years ago. That's me and my son, Teddy, who is now seven months old. And one of the biggest advantages for me working online is I get to spend a lot of time with him. Yeah, I'm always there and I get to see him grow up. I started mensfashionmagazine.com about four years ago, and that is what I still do today. And there's me lecturing at UAL, London College of Fashion, short courses where I teach online retail over a two-day course. But I just want to quickly mention this. Um, everyone here has probably got a turning point, a reason why they wanted to start a business, a reason why they wanted to go online. I said that I started this when I was 19. The reason why I started this when I was 19 it's because out of the blue, this is my dad, I lost my dad. Completely out of the blue, I was working in an office on a call center doing IT help, and this happened. And it kind of kicked me up the backside to go and do something in my life. So I left my job, took a huge risk, came here seven years ago when I first started an online retail store, and I have never looked back since. And I just wanted to kind of give you that bit of clarity because anyone can kind of have a turning point and make something of their life. Enough of the motivational speaker now. So let's get to the content. The first problem that most people say when it comes to online retail is it's too expensive. Who here thinks that online retail is expensive to set up? Does anyone think that? A few people. Who thinks that it costs more than a thousand pounds to get a website designed that you can make sales from? So with online retail, I started mensfashionmagazine.com on £100, OK? And it took me less than two weeks to make my money back. Online retail, creating an online fashion business isn't expensive. Here's a little breakdown. You can go and get a domain name for £5 on GoDaddy, on Bluehost. I'm trying to open this bottle of water. GoDaddy, Bluehost, you can get a domain name for £5. That is your brand.com. You can get hosting for £30 a year. WordPress. Shopify, these are two things that I'm going to mention in today's presentation. They are free. You don't have to pay for them. Again, it makes it so easy for you guys nowadays. A theme is a template that you can have. Again, you don't need to pay for a theme. You can get free themes. But I paid £40 for the theme that I used on mensfashionmagazine.com. I paid £20 for an additional help, and I paid £5 for a logo. Obviously, you may pay more than that 
for those breakdowns, but it's very, very inexpensive. In other words, you can set up a website today for a very, very small budget. The second problem is people say that it's too technical. Now, there's no better time than now with the resources available. Seven years ago, when I started, it wasn't as easy as it is for you guys now. Put your hands up if you've heard of Shopify. That's good to hear. Put your hands up if you heard of WordPress. Again, that's good to hear. So when I started, I had to build, I had to learn how to code. I had to learn how to create something from scratch. I had to pay money for someone to do it. Whereas nowadays, you guys can sign up to a free trial for Shopify for 14 days, you haven't got to pay anything, play around with it, see if you can set up your online store, and it really isn't as difficult as you think. So there's more resources than you can imagine. So you can create a blog or a website through WordPress or Shopify, or setting up your own e-commerce store. You can create graphics on Canva.com. Again, you don't have to be a graphic designer. You don't have to have Photoshop. Canva.com is a solution for that. And also, you can create something to sell for low to no cost. Drop shipping is very, very big as well today. Um, and there's some amazing brands, obviously, here today that you can sell online very, very easily. The next problem is people think that you need experience or you need a lot of time. You do not need experience in the industry to be able to create a sustainable business. A lot of my students that come at London College of Fashion at the short course don't have any previous experience. A lot of them just want to set up a business to make a side income. So you do not need any experience. And most importantly, you don't need as much time as people think. The reason why you don't need a lot of time is because you can outsource for very, very low cost online. So there's sites like Upwork, Elance, freelancer websites where you can outsource overseas. So for example, I've built a team up over the last seven years, and I've never met any of them. The reason is because they're all in different countries. And you do that through Upwork. If I, if I have a developer, something goes wrong with my magazine, I Skype him. We talk, he fixes it for a lot of a low cost, considering if I had an office in London. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Upwork is the one that I use. Interns is another great way to free up your time so you can spend time doing the things that you're good at. You also have automated systems online as well. I schedule up all of my social media. So my social media goes out without me actually physically doing it because I spend Monday morning scheduling up all my updates for the week, and I use Hootsuite.com to do that. Um, IFTTT is another source that you can use to schedule up everything. Things can be automated when you work online. If you're in a physical location, you cannot automate a lot of those systems. But when you're working online, you can automate a lot of it to save your time. There are more bloggers and more brands sharing their voice online. A lot of you have probably seen the success stories through Instagram, through online marketing, through online retail. And again, there are a lot of bloggers, we're going to be doing a blogger panel after this, that are now sharing their voice through the form of online media. And you really don't need to be involved in the industry. So guys, literally, I've got half an hour to show you what I teach people in two days. And two days still isn't long enough to teach them what um, I try and teach them. So I'm going to try and go through the main steps of my course in terms of online retail. And then hopefully, we've got some time. You can ask some questions. And I'll stay around as well after, after the talk. So the first step that all you need to do, if you want to think about online retail, is ask yourself the question of, will your idea work? So I started an online retail store, brighterman.com, seven years ago. It was my first ever online venture. I sold it a few years ago, and I made a lot of mistakes, but I also had a lot of successes. And one of the biggest mistakes I had is I thought it would work. I thought that everyone would enjoy my idea. I thought that everyone would like the products that I bought, the stuff that I sold. But I never, ever researched the market. So what I thought would work at 19 wasn't very good, by the way. It was very... Um, it wasn't very trendy. Um, it didn't work because I didn't do my research. Here's a great comparison. This is an article by Bloomberg. The headline is how Daniel Wellington made a $200 million business out of cheap watches. Who's heard of Daniel Wellington? And a lot of their success was through Instagram, through social media marketing. The other headline from Forbes is why do so many fledging fashion businesses fail? And my point on this is if you do not do your research, you do not know how well you're going to do. The other thing with online marketing is you do not need to stand outside with a clipboard on Oxford Circus High Street asking people questions. That isn't research when you work online. You have tools like SEMrush, Google Keyword Planner, which is now called um, AdWords. 
You have Facebook audience insights that breaks down an audience, the demographic, and tells you what people want. And you can simply just provide it to them. The second step is figuring out how you're going to make money from your online store. The first obvious way is selling physical products. You're obviously all here today thinking of selling um, physical products, buying people's products in, creating your own product, and selling them on a store. That is obviously the first way that you can make money through online retail. You can also sell someone else's product through drop shipping. Who's heard of drop shipping? Put your hands up. So drop shipping is you are simply playing the middle man or the middle woman. So um, you are literally playing, you're in the middle, you list it on your website as your product. As soon as someone buys it, you order it from the drop shipper, the drop shipper sends it to the customer. So you are simply having no risk there because you're not investing any money up front. But for me personally, I love, number one, I love selling physical products because I like being in control of the return on investment. You can also sell digital products and advertising, which is what I do through the magazine, MFM. Step three is the technical stuff. And I haven't got a lot of time to show you the technical stuff, but you can literally do this in 15 minutes. And I'm not lying when I say that. Um, I've shown this to students. I've shown this to my 50-year-old mum, and she's been able to set up a website as well. Now, this is how you do it. And I'm going to go through this very quickly, but there is some free training that I'll show you to you guys as well. The first step is you register your domain name. So that is your .com and you have to have hosting. I recommend you do it through bluehost.com. You can do both of it all in one go, so it saves you time. You have GoDaddy, you have 123Red, you have other places, but Bluehost, go there, register your domain name, and register your hosting. Hosting is something you have to pay monthly or yearly. The more visitors you get, the more you pay. Okay, but at the beginning, pay very, very little. Then you install WordPress or Shopify. Those are the two solutions that I advise to you. In terms of e-commerce, in terms of online retail, I would sway more towards Shopify than WordPress. Okay, WordPress, you can sell your own products. They have something called WooCommerce. But Shopify is a little bit easier in terms of online retail. That is free. And Shopify, like I said, you can pay a monthly fee, but you have a free trial. Once you've installed that, you find a theme and you add the theme. Developers, designers, coders, create these templates for you to download. So they've done all the hard work for you. They're all mobile optimized. They look good on mobile. They take payments. All of the hard work's been done. You haven't got to pay thousands for a design. Now, the question that everyone always says to me is, isn't that just taking someone else's idea? Isn't my website going to look like everyone else's website? But you can customize it yourself to your specifications. You change the images. You move things around. You change the font. You make it look very, very different. We haven't got time to do it now, but if you looked at Netaporte, if you looked at ASOS, if you looked at Farfetch, if you looked at um, Topshop, for example, they all look very similar anyway. Okay? There's a very simple theme that everyone follows, and you can do this with Shopify. So like I said, if you head over to YouTube, you can search for how to make a blog, and I've got a video on there that walks you through over shoulder, so it shows me doing it in 15 minutes. So in 15 minutes, I register a domain name, set up my hosting, install Shopify, um, install WordPress, sorry, find a theme, and write a post all in 15 minutes. So it isn't difficult, and you can follow along. Um, there are other videos on YouTube, guys. I'm not being biased, but um, watch mine, because it's a little bit better. Step four is content is king. This is so important. As an online retail store, the only time you update your website is when you have a new product, or you have a sale, or you have a banner, or something like that. Google, to the consumer as well, they love fresh content. So you cannot just wait until you have a new product line six months later to update your website. All of you as online retail stores need to have content. You need to get in the blogger mindset as well. Whether you do that yourself or you pay someone to do it for you or you get an intern, for example, you need to have content. Has anyone here got a blog? Put your hands up. Now, the reason why I say content is king is because we as consumers don't like being sold to anymore. We do not like being sold to. We have to have trust before we buy something. If you came up to me and said, go and buy something from my store, I'm not going to do it. But if you came up to me and gave me some value, you gave me some advice, you gave me a free blog post, you gave me a free video, I'm more likely to trust your brand and buy into your story and then buy your product. There's a guy that I follow called Gary Vaynerchuk, and he's got a concept called jab, 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 right hook. Okay. And has anyone read that book, Jeff, 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 Right Hook? 
And the idea behind that is the jab, jab, jab is the content, content, content. You're giving away free value. And then the right hook is the ask for the sell. You cannot just ask for the sell straight away. And the reason you do that is through content. So your content needs to be shareable. You need to be very consistent with your content every week, twice a week, three times a week, twice a month. However you want to do it, you just need to make sure that you're consistent with it. You need to connect with your audience when you do it, know who your avatar is, know who you're talking to, and blog to that person. Give before you get, give value, give them how-to videos, ways to wear your products, why they're going to benefit from your products. Give other people the exposure rather than just talking about yourself all the time. List posts and how-to content performs very well. Um, so if, you're a brace, if you sell bracelets, how-to about how you can wear it, how you can accessorize it, what you can wear your bracelet with on a Friday night. There is so much content that you can create around one specific product. And contact, most importantly, will attract visitors. You'll get visitors through social media. You'll get visitors through Google once you have content on your online store. If any of you have an online retail store and you don't have content, you're missing out a huge opportunity because you're just trying to sell, trying to sell, trying to sell. It can work, but you have to be a lot more aggressive than if you're giving value through content on your online store. Step five is the easy transaction. How do you actually make money? Again, it's so simple. PayPal is something that a lot of people use nowadays. Stripe is another great example. And Shopify and Wo WooCommerce, WordPress have these all built in. So if you want to start taking payments on Shopify, you simply just link up Stripe to Shopify. It walks you through it step by step. And then the money will come into your Stripe account. Every week, Stripe will release it into your bank account. It's as simple as that. There is no confusing process when it comes to making money online. Put your hands up if you've bought something online as well. Yeah, nearly the whole room. Everyone trusts buying stuff online now. So do not worry about maybe not making as much money as you potentially would if you're physically um, transacting. Just going back to that slide as well quickly, guys. Obviously, I mentioned Amazon have the one-click checkout, where they will store your details, and then they will basically take your money as soon as you say buy. That is going to be more readily available to you guys as well, as startups, as smaller brands. When Shopify starts to integrate it, and they are already doing it, it's going to be more accessible for people to simply walk to a store of their, their favorite store and buy on their phones through one-click checkout. So that is something that you want to keep in mind, because that is going to enhance the amount of sales you make. Step six is create exposure. This is the most important thing. Everyone knows that marketing is the most important thing. This is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I made first off. I invested a lot of time, a lot of resources into the product, into the website. I launched it, and I thought that because it was online, everyone would come flooding and see my website. It didn't work like that. I had to do marketing. So when I launched brighterman.com seven years ago, I put it live, I sat back, I thought I'd be a millionaire, and it didn't happen. Um, the only person who visited it was my mom, my brother, and my best friend. And that was probably the same for about a week. So I needed to do some marketing to get some visitors. One of the ways that you can do that is social media. You can build a Facebook page, a YouTube channel, an Instagram profile. Start building up your own following. And most importantly, you can look up your competitors and look at their following as well. A great tip that I can give you is look at your competitors' Facebook page, Instagram page, look at all the comments, look at all the engagements, see what people are saying about their brand, and tailor your marketing around that. Search engine optimization is something else that you may want to consider, which is basically ranking your site in Google. I studied that seven years ago. Everything I learned seven years ago is wrong, okay? It changes all the time. So that's something that you may want to consider, looking into SEO, how you can rank your website for different terms. Online coverage, getting bloggers to write about your brand, doing guest posts on other blogs, getting magazines to write about your brands online. These are all great ways to get more visitors to your site. So for example, I run an online magazine that has quite, quite a big audience. Okay? So if you're a menswear brand, you could come to me and say, could you do some exposure on my brand? If I wrote about your brand or included your brand in one of our posts, our readers are going to see that. We've already established an audience, so you're going to siphon off some of my audience. Does that make sense? So instead of just starting from scratch, doing it yourself, look to blogs, look to bloggers to write about you and gain some visitors from them. Paid advertising is very, very big right now. Who's ever run a Facebook ad campaign? 
Facebook knows everything about you. Facebook knows what you had for dinner last night, how old you are, who you're in a relationship with, where you went to college, where you are. Facebook knows too much about you. So as, a fa as an advertiser, you can run ads to a specific demographic. I could run an ad to a man who's came to this event today, who supports Liverpool Football Club, who's 25. You can get so targeted with your marketing. And Facebook ads is a pay-per-click basis, so you'll only pay when someone clicks on your ad and visits your website. Facebook ads, you have YouTube ads, the really annoying ads at the beginning of videos, right, that you can't skip after five seconds. You can run ads there as well. Again, you can get very targeted with that. You can do media buying. Now, quickly on that point, everyone is scared of paid advertising because they feel like they're going to waste money. For me, I don't call it paid advertising, I call it investment advertising. If I'm investing £100,000 into a campaign and I'm returning £200,000, I'm going to keep running that campaign. So don't look at it like you're going to be wasting money because if you can get a return on it, then keep it running and you're on complete control of that advertising. And then last but not least, direct visitors. People coming straight to your, your website. So if they remember your brand, they'll come straight to your website. If they want to reshop, they'll go straight to your website. Direct visitors, believe it or not, is a huge traffic source. So my advice to you on that point is make sure that you have the .com or the .co.uk or whatever your country code is. Okay? Um, I started with .co.uk, men's fashion magazine .co.uk, cost me eight pounds. I started to build up that website. Some bugger basically got the .com and wasn't doing anything with it. Okay? So after two years of starting to build a business from the .co.uk, I approached them and said, how much do you want for the .com? And I bought it for 2,000 pounds, just for the .com, okay? But the reason is, is because I believe the .com is very, very important. When I had the .com, we started to get more traffic, we started to be exposed on other Google search engines. So I always, always recommend you get the .com and the .co.uk. But don't spend a lot up front, because some .coms are going for a lot of money right now. I also want to highlight this, tapping into influencers. Influencers and influencer marketing is extremely important in today's market. There are people who have created an Instagram following without really knowing that they've created an Instagram following, okay? It's starting to shift, but more people have got a lot of Instagram followers, and they don't know why they've done it, or they don't know how to monetize it. So you can really tap into that. Get in touch with them, see if they can do a shout out for you on Instagram, see if they can wear your product. It's the same with YouTube. This guy here, Aaron Marino, he's got a YouTube channel. It's a men's style YouTube channel. He's an American guy. He's just hit two million subscribers. Um, six years ago, he had 30,000 subscribers. He was making videos in his bedroom. I saw him, I emailed him, really love your videos. Can I send you some products? I sent him a scarf and a watch. He did a video on it, and that generated me a lot of sales and a lot of traffic. And he had 30,000 subscribers back then. Um, I met with Aaron last week in Atlanta. He now has 2 million subscribers, and he charges about 30,000 for a video. So you can see the potential of YouTube and influencer marketing. He's just done a video with Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club have paid him to do a video sponsoring their product, and they'll get a return on that because Aaron has huge influence over his audience. So you can do it with YouTubers, people with a social following, bloggers, and lookbook.nu is another great source for that. So those are the six steps. I'm going to recap them in a minute. But this is very, very important. Okay? What potential customers truly want, every sale online is built around these three fundamentals. Trust. If I don't trust your site, I'm not going to buy from you. It's as simple as that. If I trust you, if you've given me value, if I've bought into your story, your products, and you maybe as a person, if you're a personal branding, I will buy your products because I trust you. I trust that I'm going to get what I've come for. If you've got a good product or service, I'm always going to come back. If I order something from you, and you get it to me quickly, and it's in, wrapped in nice packaging, and I get it when I want it to, I'm going to shop again. I'm going to refer you to my 5,000 Twitter followers. Okay? I'm going to share it to 300,000 people on Facebook. But if I order something from you, and it takes two weeks to arrive, and it comes in a brown envelope, and there's nothing else in it apart from the product, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm not going to recommend you. I'm not going to shop again. And then last but not least, get more than they give. If someone buys from you, you need to over-deliver. Okay? You need to give them something that they didn't expect. Everyone loves free stuff. If someone's got free pizza outside of Pizza Express outside, everyone, no one's hungry, but they'll still go and get the free pizza because they love free stuff. So you want to include that in your packaging. Give them free stuff, personalized letters. 
Mr. Porter and Netta Porter do that extremely well. When I ordered something from Mr. Porter, it had Mr. McGregor in the packaging. It had a suit bag with my name on it. It had a letter. It had a free gift. So you want to give more than they expect that they're going to get. So just to recap, and then we'll do um, a quick Q&A, I think, if we've got time. Um, number one, make sure that your idea will work. Do all your research. Number two, decide how you're going to make money for your online store. Number three, set up your website. It doesn't take any more than 15 minutes. The technical stuff, don't let it daunt you. Just follow along, and you'll get it done in 15, maybe not 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, an hour, maybe a weekend. But you can get it done a lot quicker than you expect to. Number four, focus on content, because content is king. The easy transaction, set up your payment processes, trust the process. People are transacting millions of dollars, millions of pounds every, every day online. Do not worry about that side of it. And create exposure. Focus heavily on your marketing. If your marketing sucks, so is your brand. You need to focus on your marketing. So if I can do it, guys, you can too. OK, it's simple as that. Um, I started, like I said, when I was 19. It took me a few years to actually start making a full-time income through um, an online business. But do not be daunted by it. A lot of people are put off by online retail, online marketing, because they think there's too much information out there. Just simplify the process, follow these steps, and it will make it a lot, lot easier for you. Um, guys, if you want to reach out, there's my email, paul at pmcgregor.com. Um, we've also got a, a flyer. I teach online retail at the London College of Fashion. Short courses, it's about five or six a year. So if you do want to come and learn a little bit more, um, feel free to grab a flyer off me or Mitchell, who's floating around somewhere. But hopefully this is valuable. And like I said, if you have any questions, guys, I'll be hanging around after this. And yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>